Hey guys, welcome to the channel if you're new. Welcome back if you're a subscriber. My name's Neil and it's time for another episode of Would I Lie to You? This is episode three from series five and the reason I'm supposed to watch it is because of an Irish comedian by the name of David O'Doherty. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm never sure with Irish names because sometimes there are consonant sounds that don't appear as letters in Irish words and names. I'm not, uh, presumably there's there's a funny story or two from him in this episode. The other contestants include uh, Catherine Parkinson from series 10, I believe, of Taskmaster. And the other two contestants I don't recognize, Louis Spence and Bill Turnbull. Yeah, I don't know anything about them. So not much more to say. And let's watch this one and see what uh, David O'Doherty is all about. This is episode three from series five of Would I Lie to You. On Liam Hack's team tonight, a breakfast TV presenter who appeared on Strictly and suffered a serious ankle injury. Although in my view, not serious enough. <laughs> it's Bill Turnbull! And I'm not saying he's camp, but if Glee did a Mamma Mia special starring poodles wearing spandex, he'd watch it in leg warmers. <laughs> From Pineapple Dance Studios, Louis Spence! An Irish comedian who came to England to find his fortune, or failing that, any loose change, it's David O'Doherty. Doherty. O-H-E is somehow got a huh in it. And uh, in Doc Martin, she played a doctor's receptionist who was rude and stupid. Or to put it another way, she played a doctor's receptionist. <laughs> it's Catherine Parkinson. I was so sure that Wombles were real, I used one as an example of a mammal in a GCSE biology exam. <laughs> <laughs> it was give three examples of mammals, and I said bear, that's an obvious one, yeah. whale, a bit less obvious, uh. clever, and Womble was my third example. How old oh. were you at the time? Uh, uh, 15. What are you looking at David for? <laughs> <laughs> he was like the Don Corleone of the, uh, of the Womble family. What grade did you get then? A. I should make it clear that I didn't think the children's programme was a documentary. <laughs> for example, a bear is a real mammal, but, but, but Yogi is Bear real. isn't a Thank fair you. representation. <laughs> Age 50, the question was, give three examples of a mammal. Look, <laughs> this isn't the end of a game show. It's not like, and this one's for the GCSE. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a basic question. What? Why do you think that is so easy? Well, it's quite, it's quite you are <laughs> such an intellectual snob. Because... <laughs> <laughs> I could have said cat, dog. That's what? Any number are you, are you stuck for the third one? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> In real life, they made their burrows from like condoms oh, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> What is this kids show? So in a way, the Wombles did a lot of bad. People sort of said, well, maybe I was going to throw this away properly, but maybe the Wombles can make an extension out of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're, they're possibly just trained uh, Wombles. Yeah. In the story, he's gone to the Womble optician <laughs> and said, Could you fashion me some reading glasses out of some stuff that the everyday folk have left around? Right. That, that's actually not true. He found the glasses. He found, it, they found, he found, he found glasses of exactly the right prescription. <laughs> <laughs> he said, wasn't there, an old man had died on Wimbledon Common. <laughs> Immediately the Wombles are on him. <laughs> and there he is, naked. <laughs> No dignity if the Wombles are around. It's a brilliant programme. I think it would be an insult to Catherine's intelligence to believe that she wrote that down in an exam. I don't believe it. I, I do believe it. I think it's true. I'm going to say it's true. It is, in fact, true. Oh. <laughs> I am currently seeing a hypnotist to cure me of my compulsion to visit hypnotists. What? <laughs> what? I don't think this is going to take too long. <laughs> well, it started off, I had a fear of heights and I visited a, a, a lot of different practitioners. It is a serious enough thing. I mean, it is. It's unusual to be this high. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I tried hypnosis, and then I seemed to be getting something temporary from it. I, I was getting some relief from it for a while. From your, from your fear of heights? Yeah. So you're now relieved of that at this point? The relief is temporary, so I, I ended up going back, and then I ended up getting uh, really uh, addicted to visiting 
dip the different hit. What do they do? Normally they just put me under for a minute. Put and under then what? They make me, it's serious, they make me lie. <laughs> How's that going to cure your fear of fires? That should, surely they should make you lie on top of the cupboard. <laughs> well, I am knocked out during this. When I wake up, they put me on top of something. Huh? <laughs> oh, all right. How many different hypnotists have you seen? It's into the hundreds at this point. <laughs> Whatever money I could get was just going straight into hypnosis. Then. <laughs> the one you've been seeing now for, to get, to get you off being seen a hypnotist? This one, about two years now. I'm addicted to hypnotists, I need to stop. That's what you're seeing him for? Yeah. And you've been seeing him for two years? <laughs> We're nearly out of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, the sort of uh, severe vertigo hypnosis I get doesn't involve physical contact, but it does involve being winched up. Winched up? <laughs> well, they put you out and, uh, and then you're gone. Do you remember No, going? you're How gone. You, get up you put on a sort of Velcro suit at the start. <laughs> and then... <laughs> you're, I'm gone, and then it's come down from up there on top of the, uh, <laughs> top of the cupboard. So they winch you up. <laughs> while I'm under. Yeah, so he winches you up, then slightly nudges you <laughs> slightly... Why does he have to put you on the cupboard? Why does he just winch you up and keep you winched? What? Have you got a fear of being up high on cupboards? What's the name of the hypnotist you see? Dr. Spanx. <laughs> You're doing really well. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard of it. You know when you start a sentence and you don't know how it's going to end? It's never happened before with just two words, Dr. and Spanx. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be true. Can't be true. What do you think, Lee? It's a tricky one. Well, it's a tough one. <laughs> Even if I believed everything else, I've never met anybody German called Spanks. S P E umblaut. N C K S. You just ruined it. <laughs> oh, is that what ruined it? Because there is never an umlaut on an E. There's never a man being velcroed and. <laughs> Incredible as it seems, that is a lie. Yeah. Okay, good. If that was actually somehow true, my mind would break. Please welcome this week's special guest. It's Mark. This is Mark. He is my recycling man. And last year, he put a note through my door saying he thought we were eating too many takeaways. How many takeaways were you eating? I wasn't having takeaways every night. This is why I personally think it was a very rude thing to do. He's basically my staff. Yeah. <laughs> Give us a rough average over two weeks at th that time. How many takeaways were you eating? Every other night, I think. So that's what? That's, that's normal that's, to be. Yeah. Yeah. He writes a note and it says... It said, I remember it beginning with, um, I hope you don't think this is rude. And but... I wonder if you've considered that you may be eating too many takeaways. Yours, Mark. Stand up. I am standing up. No. <laughs> Let's have a look That's at you. my mic pack. I'm going to go and have a quick feel. Oh my God. I'm allowed to, I'm gay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gay. <laughs> she doesn't feel like she's eaten a lot of takeaways. Thank she's God, firm that's, and tiny. Well, thank God that was the answer, because it would have been awful if it had gone back off. She's telling the <laughs> truth. <laughs> this is Mark. He's my hypnotist. And together we started a lost animals detective agency. <laughs> well, we started off just as a detective agency, generally. <laughs> These lost animals started ringing you up, saying, can you find my owner for me? No. What? It's the mid-80s in Dublin. There's a lot of crime. And we were eight or nine, and we decided we were going to do something about the crime. We, were ju we just weren't getting the caseload. <laughs> in the window of the local shop, there seemed to be some people uh, had lost uh, cats and dogs. And some of them were offering cash rewards. We would ring up one of these people, and I had to speak to the lady. And what would you say? Uh, Hello, did you l lose a cat called Whiskers recently? And she'd go, oh yes. And I'd go, well, you're in luck, because my eight-year-old friend and I have set up a pet-finding detective agency. <laughs> and we're going to take on your case. Did you ever find an animal, ever? No. <laughs> I absolutely buy the pet detectives. Uh, this is Mark. He saved me from choking in Argos after I... <laughs> David, David, you haven't even heard of Argos! <laughs> after I swallowed one of their little pens. <laughs> Precisely what is implausible about that? <laughs>
what about uh, the, the other David, as he's now known? Oh, Mr. we're actually Mitchell. considering that, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Me through the process of how it worked yeah. when you went to Argos. <laughs> <laughs> I looked through the catalogue mm -hmm. to find start, the kettle. Good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What type of kettle? Uh, did you go for, a, a, for boiling water. <laughs> <laughs> And then what? What happens next? I checked on the little keypad that they had it in, in stock. You, I'll tell you what, you are down with yeah. the kids. <laughs> Pen. Yes. You swallowed. How long was it? It was sort of about that long, I think. And you choked? Never <laughs> 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 such a clean sentence meant so much. <laughs> I was sort of chewing the end of it. I sneezed. You sneeze? The way you do when you sneeze and suck in at the same time, yeah? And what else? I can't see Mr. Mitchell in Argo. I'll go pet detectives. Don't blame me, that's all I'm saying. We're gonna go David Adoherty. I'm saying David Adoherty, okay. Yeah. Agreed, agreed. David Adoherty and I ran a pet detective. Oh, yeah. We made business cards. And, uh, <laughs> and the caption at the bottom is, we handle everything. <laughs> You're the first detective. Yeah. And Mark is... He's, he's, he's down his notes. Down his notes. <laughs> I made myself cry before every big dance performance to get rid of any excess water weight. Lie. My first question is, what do you think of to produce this torrent of tears? As a dancer, you're so criticised for the way you look. And so I just think about how awful I would look and what kind of criticism I, I would get. Right. So that's enough to reduce me to tears. Pounds? Would you be losing pounds just for a quick drive? Yes, you can. You absolutely <laughs> can. A lot of ballet dancers, a lot of commercial dancers do do it. I mean, it's a, it's a funny world we live in. What we do is extreme. What we do with our body is extreme. How do you make sure it doesn't go onto your skin and then still be weighing you, you do down? do it like this with a flat back over. <laughs> I'm surprised you can be in that position and can do anything that will bring tears to your eyes. <laughs> Would you like some music? Oh, don't get me started, because you know I'm not an exhibitionist. And let me know. <laughs> I think we as a team don't think that that's true. It's a lie. It's a lie. Lie. I can tell the circumference of someone's head just by looking at them. <laughs> David, what do you think? No, you can't. <laughs> Let's move on. I actually had my head measured yesterday for what a, a week. What a waste of time. You should have just come here today. Yeah. <laughs> what my head circumference is hey, right hey, now. Catherine, bring it on. <laughs> Could you just have a little bit of a... <laughs> From my expert opinion, you are... 21 and 3 quarters inches. I would say you are a large. <laughs> I was 24 inches. Well, there you go. Classic name. You're clearly a slow three. <laughs> 28, 26, 23 and a half. Uh, Catherine's got quite a small head. She's got quite a small head, which you defined early on as large. <laughs> I don't think it's true. Do you not? No. <laughs> there is something about it that just, just has the ring of Fishy. total croc to it. Yeah. <laughs> if you had a tape measure, uh, you would prove that I'm right, and then you'd say true. Yeah, and, and it, it would be point. true, and we'd get a point. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I know I'm doing. I used to be a vet. You've got to get the height so of the head. To... David, could you to... read out the result, please? No. <laughs> <laughs> David, what, what does that lead you I to? I still do? don't believe <laughs> it. I don't. Oh, my goodness. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I was, in fact, telling a lie. No. no. <laughs> <Really>. <laughs> And I can reveal that David's team romped a victory by six points to three. <laughs> and my individual liar of the week this week is David O'Doherty. <laughs> Good night. So yes, I, I heard rumblings about the addicted to hypnotists story in, in my comments since I started the show.
I'm not sure I had the connection that it was David O'Doherty telling that story or not, but nice to know that I finally found it. Uh, <laughs> it it's rare because you don't often see people telling their story falling apart mid story and and yeah he just couldn't keep it going he he could not like he, man he should never have brought winches into it there there's got to be a better way <laughs> but 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 he, he tried to stick with it i i admire that and he uh, just could not hold on but uh but a really entertaining episode yeah i i really enjoyed it as always, thank you guys for joining me. These are so much fun to do. It's great to hear your thoughts and comments down below. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing. And yeah, if there's any other episodes that you feel I need to check out, mention them in the comments below and I will eventually get to them all. I have, I have a pretty good feeling about that. Thank you guys for joining me. Until the next time, take care, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.